Oh, hello, <laughs> Wavelengthers. Here we are. We are up and running. <laughs> How's it going to you? My name is Mei Li. This is Lou. You'll meet Malu later on. Um, I'm going to have a conversation with myself via avatars. Uh, thank you so much, Wavelength, for having me. Again, my name is Mary, and uh, I will talk about my, my my pandemic experience and how I've been pivoting and how I've been handling everything. So let's start from the top, shall we? Um, just before the pandemic, I was supposed to move to Los Angeles, so... Um, that put a, a, a wrench in a lot of um, my plans. I'm sure everyone's plans. Um, I was also working for a company called Occupied VR, so I was on um, the on world building, character design, um, face and motion capture. So like a, kind of like digital mascoting, uh, mascoting all the the characters and um, voiceover work. And again, story. So that those were though this was sort of the reason why it, that was kind of the beginning, the seeds of of Malu and um, and getting into all this like three D stuff. So I the pan once the pandemic hit, I um, you know when we were all sort of in shock and sort of surprised with what was happening. I think uh, the isolation wasn't helpful um, for myself personally. Um, I really struggled with a lot of intrinsic thoughts and um, just the isolation of being alone was extremely challenging. Um, I got into 3D modeling after my first thought when the pandemic hit was, oof, I can like rest, I can actually like rest now. And I was like relieved to some degree, which is like um, kind of just interesting that I was going through the motion of that and sort of noticing that. But as the months went on, things got very challenging, of course, because I wasn't working like the rest of us in the, in the arts and performative arts. Um, we, we weren't able to connect, which is something really important, I think. Um, not just being an artist, but as a human, to be able to connect in that way. That's, that's sort of how we know how to connect with folks, too. And um, also m monetary, like just being able to make some kind of income um, sort of was extremely helpful. Um, but, yeah, a lot of the projects and a lot of the things and the move and all that stuff that I was looking forward to, of course, wasn't happening. The, the major benefit, though, I would say, is that because of the pandemic, I was sort of forced to look at a lot of things. Um, and because of all the internal struggles that I was dealing with personally, um, I really took to VR, actually. I really, really took to VR. So I really took to... Um, the virtual sites, uh, the social apps, the virtual meditations, um, 
I was meeting up with people in VR, my partner, we were meeting up in office spaces, virtual spaces. Um, we would go fishing together, stuff like that. So we could still work remotely. And it did feel like when I would put in, put in simulations that were environments that were sunny and beautiful and calming, I did feel a sense of peace. It's interesting being here in, in, um, in Los Angeles. Currently I'm in Los Angeles and something that I'm noticing is some of the birds from those simulations. I'm hearing those birds here in Los Angeles and it brings me right back to that like mood and that moment of how that, how that experience felt. Um, also on some people's TVs here in the, like the homepage, the music is very much, very much reminds me of like a simulation. So, um, anytime, like I'm on, on like a homepage hearing the music, whatever the default music is typically like ambient and like pad, it just brings me back to like the pandemic of like that moment. It's such a weird, such a weird remembering. Anyhow, during the, the pandemic, um, I had to also deliver, uh, a record to a label stone's throw based out of Los Angeles. Listening to that record now, I just, it also brings me back to those, those times and, and those memories. I, I actually lost someone, my cousin, Jordan Daveline, who, during the pandemic in January, January 25th to suicide. So it was very, very hard on the family and dealing with the death during a pandemic is like extremely tragic, and very, very hard to get some closure and to connect with other family members during that time. And the isolation just drove a lot of, a lot more separation and more isolation um, within the family too. So that, that is, was, and is still extremely challenging onto itself. Malu, the record I wrote, um, just to give you some background, Malu is based off of, um, a character. The name Malu actually comes from a group of children. Um, I used to babysit a group of children, uh, April Alarmo like started this school after care school and these children they had that I took care of they had like a they had like the ooh language so I was Malu so that's actually how I got my name Malu before the pandemic I was working for Occupy VR and they wanted to scan me and make me one of the characters and I named that character Malu so that's sort of where Malu started um, and I started to write a bunch of music. Um, on my downtime, you know, pre pandemic even, um, and had like a musical project called Malu, which was all written on something called a Tenorion, which is this like little Japanese sequencer. A lot of the textures have like sort of these video game sounds, um, kind of eight bitty, um, very unique to themselves. And, um, during the pandemic, when I was writing this, this album, I was doing a lot of therapy and was on a lot of apps such as Headspace, um, which I highly recommend Headspace. And I'm currently on Bloom, which is um, also has like a lot of CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, which I'm a huge fan of. Um, our brains, I believe, kind of they don't really work in our favor. <laughs> we have these like natural biases and neg negative biases. So, um, I kind of had to like, just try to really bite tooth and nail and look for every single tool and resource that was going to be helpful just to put the odds in my favor. You know, I'm just one, one human having an experience and a collective experience, um, that, that was extremely challenging, you know, for all of us and impacting, we're impacting each other, you know, in so many ways. The, the album is a science fiction record. Really, I kind of look at it like a kid's record to some degree <laughs> of science fiction lullabies. And it's all in mental health, you know. So one song, for example, is called Dream With You, and it's a breakup song. Um, Malou is breaking up with, like, an aspect of themselves. So 
Malu is created by these children, not just in real life, in my real, Maylee's real life, but in Malu's life, there are these group of children called the Children of Ooh that create um, this character Malu. And Malu also has these rememberings of Maylee Todd, some like consciousness of Maylee Todd. So these sort of toxic rememberings and like patterns, Malu's always constantly sort of struggling throughout the whole record. Um, and at the end sort of realizes that they need to like break up with these like certain aspects and patterns as like an observer of their own like consciousness. So yeah, there's, there's so many aspects of the record, all rooted in science fiction, all rooted in psychology and mental health, um, all from like a bit of an observer's point of view. Um, and I found it extremely therapeutic, like whether it's pop or whatever, I don't even know, but I don't think so. It's actually pretty, pretty alternative and like really, really wacky, but I really enjoyed making it. Um, and also really struggled making it with all the technology I was using at Tenorion and, and doing all the space tracking and all this sculpting these avatars. Um, and you know, it was like not only expensive, but it was very challenging on a technical, on the technical side of things, um, while maintaining, you know, all the other things sort of in my life too, you know? Um, but Malou has like a, is, has a very, the album, the record, the identity even is very, very close to my heart and who I am to some degree. You know, these digital identities, like this is my, my take at, at making a satirical kind of statement on digital identities and sort of the impact that it has, you know, um, some people love a comment section, you know, on, on, on social media, not a huge fan of it unless it's positive, um, or, you know, productive and constructive, not destructive. Typically they're destructive. Um, so yeah, the cure curation also of, of like social media and, you know, I, I sort of struggle with that too. When social media first came out, I really, really struggled with social media and of course diving into things like comparing oneself to another being based off of the curation of their feed. Um, yeah, that, that created like a lot of anxiety and just learning more and more and more about sort of these digital identities that we all have. Like right now I'm like speaking through an avatar, which is like a pretty obvious digital identity. But I think to some degree we all participate. Um, we're all online you know, we're all using it for movements or making statements or, you know, jokes, what, what, whatever the case may be. Um, we're using it as like a form of expression, potentially a way to get a reaction, maybe for business. It impacts our life. These digital, these digital identities and these digital um, practices, you know, they have real life implications as we, as we, as we see, you know? Um, and I think it's really, really important to find ways to use these technologies for a, a productive way, for a more sustainable way, more sustainable way to live. Um, so I think for me, it was really important to, kind of dive into um, reading up on algorithms and trying to understand them a little bit more and how that's being used, um, trying to understand a little bit more about um, just the psychology of sort of what our natural negative biases are. So there's like comparative, um, there's like people use social media to compare and kind of can't help themselves. Um, and also, I forget what the term is, but there's like another term when you go on social media because you want to find everything that's wrong with someone. I forget. There's like a term for it. But 
it's you're looking at someone not to not to relate to them, but to see everything that they like, where they fall short, like maybe how they use language or maybe their point of view. Like you kind of like nitpick. That's very destructive. And we all have these like these things working within us. So just like reading up. So I'm just a little bit more aware. So it just doesn't take me, <laughs> take me away. <laughs> My brain doesn't just take me and I just willy nilly fall away wherever it wants to go. No, I'm like trying to be a little bit more mindful and trying to create some self-awareness and trying to separate myself from my, my big old brain, you know, um, be a little bit more of an observer. So the practices that, um, I'd like to share after this is, uh, some practices that I do at home every day, every morning. Um, and I hope you enjoy them. Thanks so much, Wave Bank, for having me. Toodly toot toot toot. Zoot zoot zoot. Hi. Welcome to the Infinite Programs Mental Health Portal a program that is designed to help you regulate your mood and focus on the present moment through these challenging times. I am your virtual avatar, Malou, here to guide you through a series of mindful experiences. You can take a mental note as we explore these exercises, but I encourage you to write them down. This portal is designed to help you create awareness of the patterns in your life. Exercise one, understanding your mood. How are you feeling today? Are you happy? Are you sad? Are you anxious? Are you mad? Are you feeling neutral? Please write it down. Do you know why you feel this way? Is it because of work, finances, relationships, sleep, perhaps family? Please write it down. Understanding our mood helps us manage our emotions. If we are more aware of our moods, we may be able to manage our lifestyle choices and make informed health decisions, prevent or avoid triggers of negative moods and work towards a better quality of life. Exercise two, deep breathing. Deep breaths have shown to slow down the heartbeat, lower and stabilize blood pressure and lower stress. To experience deep breathing, find a comfortable place to sit or lie down. Let us begin with some big deep breaths. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Breathe in through your nose. Hold it for four, three, two, one, and exhale out through your mouth. Breathe in through your nose. Hold for four, three, two, and one, exhale out through your mouth. Breathe into your nose. Hold for four, three, two, one, and exhale out through your mouth. Great job. Exercise three, thinking or feeling. The mind continues to keep us in a perpetual state of thinking or feeling. With the breathing technique, we can remain present, thinking about a breath, and observe when a thought arises, we can label it thinking or feeling. Not judging it, not dipping into its narratives, just, oh, that's a thought. I'm thinking, I'm thinking about something, either the past or the future, and bring myself back to the breath. And as I breathe, maybe another thought comes in, and there's an emotion that comes with that thought. Oh, looks like I'm feeling 
I feel a certain way about something. That's okay. I'm just gonna let it go and return back to the breath. Thinking or feeling. So let's try this exercise. Breathing through our nose. And exhale out through your mouth. Good. Just relaxing, breathing. Still breathing. Maybe a thought arises. Just label it, thinking or feeling, and then return back to the breath. And exhale. thinking or feeling and return back to the breath. Good work today and I hope to see you tomorrow for another session. If you'd like a tour of the Infinite Program, please click in the link below for a 360 experience of the program on the planet. Infinite Program is a series of relaxing environments that can also be viewed on your phone, computer, and in VR using the YouTube app.